What's up? Welcome back to Naptime Builder. Uh, if you're new, thanks for checking me out, checking <laughs> checking the channel out, and uh, like and subscribe. And if you're back, then welcome back. And if you ain't like and subscribe, you can do that now. But uh, as you can tell in the last, if you watched the last video, finally got the most of the, pretty much all the stuff swapped over from both from the in, one engine to the other. I've uh, got the engine out of the cradle of the Firebird. Got it moved. Got it moved over here in the corner. Separated the other engine finally from the transmission. Got it right here. Almost ready to go back in. Or, well, to go into the cradle. Today, I'm mostly just going to be another nap time. So, you know, today I'm going to be... I'm going to go ahead and put some new plugs in this engine. And I got some pieces of metal here. That, uh... That I'm hoping to attempt to make some EGR delete plates. So... I'm gonna try my hand at that, get rid of a couple things, get out the way. If it's unnecessary, whatever. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I bought some plugs to go in these, uh, the exhaust manifold, but uh, blogging off some EGR ports and stuff like that, taking a couple things off is most of what I'm gonna be doing today because usually small stuff like that takes, takes up a lot more time than you really think it would, but I'm all. I'm gonna do what I can. I do got one or two little small things left that I'm gonna swap over from one in, from the other engine, but for the most part, we're, we're there. I just wanna go ahead and get new plugs and wires and stuff on it before I throw it in the cradle and then I'll start bolting it down and stuff like that. So let's see what we can do. Alright, so I got the plugs changed. As you see, uh, these right here, I got one on each manifold is what I was talking about. One of the things I was talking about. And I did get some things from Home Depot earlier today. These little half inch. And, and I tested it out. I, I found something that this screwed into and then made sure this screwed into it, which should have worked. And holding them up and looking at them real close, they look identical, really. But this just does not want to start threading down in there. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but it just never catches. Obviously, one-handed is kind of hard for me to... But either way, I mean, it should be catching. And every time you think it does, it just catches for one little split second and then it's back out. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave these in. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep those. I'm just gonna take a bolt, drop down the top of this, weld around the top of that bolt. And that way, I'm gonna do figure out something. See that bolt's up in there. It's not sticking down no further than this would originally. So that way, later, if we do find something that fits it better, I, we can just take this out with a wrench and replace it. Instead, but for the quick fix, I'm probably just gonna weld this bolt in the top of this. That way it's, like I said, that way it's removable and can be replaced later. It'll look stupid for a little bit, but I mean, at least it won't have this big old pipe running around and all that mess. So, we're gonna do that. And right here, 
This comes up here. I need to make a little. I need to make a little plate to bolt here to cap that off. And also want to cap this right here off. So do that. Then also I need to make one and they take this off and make one to cover this spot as well. So we're gonna see how much we can get done. It's probably gonna take a whole lot longer than it really should. But let's see. Here's what I got from the time lapse. On WD-40 about took my lines, but I can still see them good enough to cut it. Right now I'm kind of letting it cool off a little bit. My holes are right, I was just check. I just checked them to make sure that my uh, bolts would go through. But I'm gonna let this cool down a minute and then I'm gonna take the angle grinder to her and see if I can make these halfway resemble what my lines represent. Well, they still hot right now, but right here's what I got. This is my first one. It obviously is the worst looking one of the two, but it still covers the, the spot. I mean, it, it's on the back of the motor. It ain't gotta be the best looking thing ever. I mean, the back of the manifold. So, our exhaust manifold, you know what I'm saying. But uh, it covers the spot and everything, so it'll be all right. Then this right here, definitely looks better than it they could both be smoothed off a little bit more but uh honestly as long as they do the job i'm not really that worried about their looks so right now they're hot as could be so i'm gonna let them cool off for a minute and while i'm letting them cool off i'm gonna go ahead and take the other that i, I don't even know the the real the exact name for it but that other part of the EJR mess I'm gonna take it off that way I can uh, try to trace out on another piece of metal what the size of it and all that mess and hopefully by the time I get that traced and happy with my drawing or whatever I can see if these see how these fit on the engine and everything and then I can go ahead and start drilling my holes and cutting that one out so there it is All right, so some people might have, might think that was a stupid way to get that trace, but that's roughly what I got. I'm gonna cut a little bit outside of them lines just to make sure, but for the most part, that should be good for what I need. I know it was a roundabout way of doing it, but there was a little, a little spout that sticks off back of that there and 
so I just kind of cut the tape or, or tore the tape around it and that way maybe I could uh, get semi close and like I said I'm gonna cut on the outside of them lines to try to make sure but uh, we'll see how that goes Number three, like I said, they're not gonna be the the best looking thing ever. Obviously, they're go not gonna be as good looking as the ones that you buy or whatever. But I mean, right there is one of the other two that I've made. I mean, it covers, it's good. This one down here is the other one. It's actually under the original thing there. I just went ahead and put that over the top of it. Maybe it'd help it cinch down a little bit better on this one. Let's see here, you know, let me zoom this thing out a little bit. Maybe that'll help. Put this camera down for a second so I can get these bolts started. But, uh, here she is. Nice and tight. Still got the gasket behind it. So, it's pretty good. Now I can take this right here off. This line that runs up here, right there. And then I'll just block that off. So, let me get that off there. All right, so there I went ahead and pulled that uh, little piece that I said also that connected to that EGR thing back there. Pulled that off. Now I just need to cap that little uh, vacuum line right there, or vacuum port. And I also went ahead and changed that, uh, swapped out that rear sensor. I think it was an oil pressure sensor. Is that Lewis? Can't remember exactly. But anyways, it was different on this one because there was just one coming off of that where on the... Uh, or, my bad, on the Corvette engine there was two two sensors coming off of that and on the Firebird there was just one so I went ahead and swapped that over while I was, while I was thinking about it. But I'm trying to look over this thing and see if there's anything else that I know for sure that has to swap over. I did the plugs. My wires didn't. They're, uh, they was coming in at like 1.30 or so and it's like three something now i need to call and see if they actually came in if so i probably could run and get those but if i do run and get them then while i'm going i might as well run over to my other property and spray some roundup and bush whatever killer around that fence because i'd like to get that sprayed before my next mowing and before they start the uh dirt work so what to do, what to do. I guess I need to look over this thing and uh, just make sure that everything seems right. I know it's gonna seem weird to me because I've taken a few things off that wasn't needed, but I think I'm pretty sure for the most part that we got it. I could go ahead and lift it up 
raise it up and put my uh, engine mounts on and try to set it in this chassis that would or this uh, front end here that would that would be big moves for the day uh, oh I forgot I totally forgot I was planning on just welding welding around the bottom of that bolt there and that I totally forgot that My goodness, which I'm taking, I'm gonna be taking that out to do it. So I could always weld that tomorrow, but go ahead and I'll take that out tomorrow and weld it, but go ahead and try to put the engine in the front end there. If you haven't noticed, apparently I really want the engine set in the front end. Apparently that, that's, the, that's the goal I was kind of giving myself today, so. I think, I think we're gonna try to see if we can make it happen. All right, so what all that nonsense right there was is uh, I raised it up and I was going ahead, going ahead and putting my uh, engine engine mounts and everything on. And come to find out, once again, the Corvette engine had another sensor that the original engine didn't. So I went ahead and took that off because it was in the way of my motor mount. So I found a bolt that would fit up in it. It was way too long. So it was way too long, the bolt that I'd found. Where's that daggum thing? There it is. So this is the uh, sensor or whatever was in it. And uh, there's also one on the other side. And the one on the other side is the only one that uh, the Firebird engine had. But this was in the way of this uh, bracket here. This was in the way of the bracket, and it was right here. And that bolt is right there. I know, it's whatever, though. But uh, it was up in there, and it was sticking out, and it was, was going to be in the way of my bolt for the mount and everything. So, uh... I found a bolt that would fit it and chopped it off so it wouldn't be sticking out ridiculously long and it wouldn't go in too far and everything and I put some Teflon tape on it and cinched her down and now my bracket fits just fine so that's pretty awesome but uh I just remembered I I wouldn't be able to drop the pan or whatever with it in the cradle there so I'm gonna go ahead Drop the pan. Throw some gasket on it. And cinch it back up. Probably go ahead and put my oil filter on there too while I'm here. And then uh, see if I can get that mounted to that front end of the Firebird there. And then if I can do that, I'm calling it quits for the day because I feel like I've made a lot of progress. But, uh, and plus my wife's probably about ready to body slam a couple kids. So I might need to go in and get tagged in. That way I can get hold of them. <laughs> but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what I can do about that. And uh, if I can get that done, that'll be the end of the day for today. Anyways, so let's see if we can get that done before she hollers for me.
so I might lie just a little bit. Uh, I did not take that oil pan off, obviously. Uh, I did go around and check them, and I never took it off before. The engine only had like 60,000 miles on it. It could probably use one of them. But I mean, the uh, everything's tight. It doesn't look like it's leaked around it or anything. So I'm just leaving it on. I did go ahead and put my new oil filter on while I had it up here easy in my face, you know. So <clears throat> I think I'm going to attempt to set this thing in that cradle. It's probably going to be fun by myself, but it's all been fun by myself. So, I mean, it's always a challenge when you ain't got no help. But uh, let's see, what, see if we can get anything done. That's, that's my goal for the day. So, <coughs> so if I can get it, if I can get it set down, then... I feel like I accomplished a lot, so. Let's <laughs> Cross your fingers. All right, so here she is. She is bolted into the front suspension and cradle of the Firebird. There's the old Firebird motor, that Corvette transmission. Now I guess next, which is not today because I'm done for the day, next will be most likely mating that transmission back up to that engine well to this engine for the first time well, there she is looks like I'm gonna have to this power steering line right here I might have to try to feed it back through and rerun it or something because there's something keeping it from going all the way over that one right there it's the wrong one looks like but uh, there she is, and that is it for the day. Be careful, okay? okay. Where are you going? You wanna go to one of these now? Yeah. All right, sit down. Yeah. Watch out, Abby. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, she started first. Hey, what's up? I'm back again another day. I got this line across my forehead because I just, <laughs> I didn't like to pick up my camera or anything quick enough, I guess. I went ahead and uh, welded them bolts into them exhaust manifold fittings. Uh, they're cooling off right now and it is, Pouring down rain. A big old, big old stock shower. A big old shower just came through a few minutes ago, but uh, it's it's still raining a little bit. Hopefully it ends soon. If anything, then at least it's cooling it off some. But uh, I'm letting I'm letting those fittings cool off right now. Here, here they are. They are ugly. But uh, I'm just going to, I'll hit them with a, a sanding disc and uh, make them look a little bit better. But they're they're not for looks anyway, so it's whatever. I'll have to let, give them a few minutes to cool down before I can grab them up. I guess I could just go ahead and grab them with some vice grips or something. And go ahead and start sanding on them. But uh, I'll do that. I'll put them in. There was something else. I can't really remember right now the... That I'll still need to do. Don't know. Don't 
don't know, don't know. I'll just drop that over there for now. You know, keep stepping on transmission code lines. Be nice when I have to stop walking in and out of the rain. All right, well, I finally got back home and swapped those or put those plug wires on. I went ahead and threw my belt on. I had my tensioner pulley on upside down. It threw me up for a loop there for just a minute. But uh, she's on and tight. And I got my plug wires ran. This looks like crap right here. But got them zipped up and everything. That was a booger to get through. There's a little gap right there where I snuck them through. It took me a little while to do this side. But, uh, I guess I'm about to try to make this engine and transmission up. Here she is. <clears throat> Transmission engine is mounted up now. And at first, uh, I did have it mounted a little sooner, but the way I had that transmission on that dolly, it was actually putting pressure, or it was actually putting pressure on the torque converter, so I wasn't able to spin it to line my holes up for the torque converter bolts. So, uh, That's it for the day. Um, that time lapse, I got pretty much all of the wiring harness hooked up on the engine and transmission that I can with it outside of the car. Um, I got three, maybe four plugs, in which a couple of those are going to be the EG, some of the EGR stuff that I deleted. So I'm sure that'll throw me for a loop until I remember exactly which one it is. A little bit which one it is, but. Uh, here it is. Here it is. I gotta slip that. Another piece of hose back on that, cause that was poor. Go right here. But uh, I'll say it. Yeah. But uh, other than the starter and a couple more plugs she's ready to roll back up under there so uh that'll be it for this video because i'm running out of time but uh next video will be me putting it in the car so uh thanks for watching that time builder like share subscribe really appreciate it thanks <laughs>